Anyways, what are we looking at? I love Boost Control on Z1. So nice and it's smooth. It's very pretty. Great success. Great success. Hello guys, welcome back to another race box video here. That is so cringe. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're in. unboxing parts for this customer's yeah. car. Yeah, so we're doing something a little different today. Uh, so I guess we're actually showing a customer build today. Get to the the big boy. Let's bring it over here. <laughs> this one. Yeah, let's just unbox one of them. Cause uh, I can take it out. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> grab that. Fall, oh, please. Wait, wait. But, I'm just gonna take it out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I already broke that open before. Oh yeah, I couldn't get that out earlier. Oh, so you told me that as I'm taking it out. Yes. You just gotta grab everything and just kinda break you gotta break the foam. So these are how the turbos are shipped to you. They put these foam pieces like all over the turbo and kind of fuse them together. So it's like that. It comes as like, as like a giant block of foam. So there's no way to damage these turbos. Harder to unpack. Bro. <laughs> it still doesn't, okay. There you go. Here's one of them. Bro, please. Nice. I mean, good packaging. Yeah. On their part. Yeah, I could use a box cutter right now. Yeah. All right, we gave him a weapon. Watch me stab myself in the face. Oh, not the first time. This is a dry reset, remember? Yeah. That's one. Okay, let me see. Nice. So go on like this? Yeah. Or? Yeah, very cool. Very nice. Uh, uh, let's get the yellow one I out. I get to struggle with the other one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. So D1 includes all the OEM Nissan gaskets, uh, bolts, Drink. uh hoses, lines, everything. Everything you need to make these turbos work, uh, everything that's that you've touched will be replaced with new OEM parts. And yeah, very nice. This is like probably the best part about this turbo kit. Uh, you buy this one kit, it comes with everything. You do not need to go out to Nissan to go, go buy extra gaskets, extra O-rings, extra lines, or anything. It's all in this box. Yeah, it took you like 10 minutes just to do that. Nice. So, it's kind of cool because we have both sets of turbos. The ones on the right are for the 2023Z and the ones we just opened are for the Q50s. Apparently they're different to fit. This is different. Yeah, with that. Um, the turbo speed sensor is very different. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you really need, really need to measure. Yeah. It, it, it feels like this cartridge is slightly different. The Z? Yeah, we need to get a measuring tape, but I can't tell. What about the, the passenger side? And then this is different. You see the wastegates. The wastegates. Oh, the size is different. This one, does, there's a little lip on the inside. This one cuts all the way in. Both, see how both of them cut all the way in? Yeah. Whereas this one doesn't. Size. These, these wastegates are much smaller. Nice. And then the turbo speed sensor is much smaller. Yep, that's the Q50. And this is Z. Z. Um, that's the obvious one. Let's see. <laughs> What about the yeah the fins and everything and the internals? Oh, I'm mostly looking. The exhaust at this housing side. looks the same. The yeah. Exhaust port, whatever. Port you call should it. be the same. How about inside? I'll do the exhaust side first. Don't mix them up. It looks the same. Well, you can tell by the speed sensor. Yeah. So now we know the differences. Yeah. They look very similar. Z1 would know the differences, but yeah. have they said what the differences are, or are they just? No, I don't think so. It's probably off by a couple millimeters. They look the same. Yeah, it's very hard to tell just There's a little bit there. different there, but I don't know if that's just general casting. They're, the if, if they're side. different, then they could be different by like a millimeter. Yeah. 
shiny. Oh, it's yeah. different sizes? They look the same to me. Really? Yeah. Am I tripping? Are you tripping? It looks like one's thicker than the other. I don't know. Yeah, and I think the angle might be slightly yeah. different. Like this. this is the Z. Oh, that's a Z. So the, the Z has a bigger inlet. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Z, Z compressor is housing inlet. inlet is slightly bigger. But the fins are the exact same way. Right? Yeah, but I mean, you can't really tell. Yeah. They, they could be a slightly bigger turbo. Nice. I'm sure, yeah, I'm that, sure somebody, I mean, that somebody has one more though. That would explain why the, the speed sensor is slightly different. Yeah. What's interesting is on this one, they've they trimmed out a good chunk of the inlet. Yeah. yeah for the Z right here. There's a dimple on the inside? Yeah, for this screw hole. But you can see how this one indents a lot more. That indent actually does not make an effect. Yeah. It just has a little dimple for the screw hole. That's it. So it's smooth inside. It's still smooth. So, so they look the same on the inside. This one's just oh, you a little bit more bored out. Yeah, they look the same. So it's, it must be just very minor fitment issues. Yeah. So and then wastegate. Either the, the difference in wastegate size and the... Maybe that's what Berto had to modify. Maybe the difference in so, wastegate yeah. size and then the turbo speed sensor. I wonder if the exhaust side is all the same. I imagine the exhaust side should be should because be the they same. all use the same downpipes. Yeah. So there should be the same exhaust. Maybe that's just the two minor differences on the compressor. The next day. Yeah, I picked the great time to start recording. Jesus. Oh, it's back. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, so the power just went out and came back on. So. Great, great shop we have. Very cool. Yes. Anyways, I guess we're going to make a video of the whole install and tubing on this car. Ooh. I think. <laughs> so it's been a while since we did a whole YouTube video on Z1 turbos. This is like before your time. So this is back when the like the very very first batch of Z1 turbos came out. So it's 2024 now, and we have the updated ball bearing, uh, ball bearing versions of these turbos. Anyways, we're putting these in the car. Uh, I'm not gonna walk through the whole process of dropping the engine and putting these on because that's gonna be like an eight-hour video. You could do it on jack stands. Uh, this car already has uh, pure stage twos, so he has a feeling for that. It should work for the C1 turbos as well. Uh, this guy does race a lot uh, at the track, so you can see he has pretty good tires up in the back. Uh, the ET Street R's in the back. I think it's a 28-inch tire, so 305, 45, 17. Um, so this car should be pretty pretty quick once the turbo's in and we get it all dialed in. Um, oh, and this car has been converted to air to air. That's why you don't see, well, they're already off anyways, but there's no intercoolers up top and there's no uh, second reservoir right here for the coolant. Why Shit. are you so dirty? I walked outside in the rain for the Viper. Why didn't you tell everybody about the jumpsuit that you don't wear? Here we go again. All the uniforms that I paid for that you don't wear. You, you, you were lucky you got back when there's power. The power keeps going on and off right before you, you There's pull no it up. power at home, so. <laughs> so you can continue to rant about uh, Houston power again. The Houston I mean, infrastructure. This is a pretty like rough storm. <laughs> yeah. So I'm surprised that we have power right now. No. <laughs> well, it went out earlier and then uh, Alex lost the internet for a little bit. Yeah, and then but it came it's back, back now, so we'll see how long this lasts. Pretty sure we're going to get flooding today. Nice. This is the most rain we've seen in a while, dude. Oh, yeah. It hasn't rained this hard for probably a year. Yeah. Like last year, we got no rain. So, so this is when the power goes out, it's like complete darkness in here. And then Marcus, Marcus is, is like, hoping for it because he's, he's like, like, damn, I don't want to work. No, what but he's like heck? in the middle of a dropping, dropping an engine and he's like, he's like, oh, I can't see anything. But yeah, I'm using a flashlight moving the table. Over. That's so funny. Uh, bro, our architect kids got here. But we were waiting on these for a while because these got held up in customs. <laughs> oh. oh, that's a lot of rain. <laughs> Oh, my timing was perfect on that shit. What, what happened? I went to Baskin Robbins to get a chocolate cake <laughs> for myself this morning, and like, it was fine. It was like it was drizzling, and then I finished. I walked out. There's a thunderclap, and then this. You gonna die? Let's puddle out some cars today, boy. What? What? <laughs> what? Hey, in here, hey, put us put the Z outside. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, put the Audi outside. Put that piece of shit outside. Damn. Not the Q50. <laughs> Anyways, oh. ready to drop this engine? Yeah. <laughs> I hope that power doesn't go out when, when you're like in the middle of dropping it.
So here's stock frame turbo, full frame turbo. It's bigger. What? Well, <laughs> I guess like that. All right, both sides are out. Uh, you have what? Ten minutes to put the new turbos back Let's in. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Cracked out already. <laughs> How many Red Bulls do you want right now? Uh, two. Two. And a all coffee. Right. Bet. All right. So next steps are just transferring over all the lines and waste skates over to the new turbos. Uh, make sure the waste skates are just pro adjusted properly and. Put them on. We have the driver's side on already. This is probably the only time we'll get to see these. Uh, again, before everything goes back and it goes back in the car because it's kind of hard to see them. Hey, what's the thing you have to do with the wastegate? Alright, so I already did already. But, so for the Z1 turbos, you have to measure from the tip of the electronic whiskey rod to the base of the plastic piece right here. So from here to here, it has to be approximately 25.5 millimeters. So once you get that set to about 25.5 millimeters, you put the rod on the, the flap and then you put it over here on the rod and then you're gonna tighten up this 10 millimeter until it's snug. Well, not snug, but like, uh, unless, until the flap is closed all the way, it doesn't wiggle and then you snug up the the 10. Nice. Yeah, that's the best way. To so if you mess up on this, let's drop the, drop the engine all over again, yes. fix that. So make sure you do this far right if you're doing this by yourself. Okay, so this is almost finished up. While he's getting that done, on the dyno over here, Alex is doing another Z1 turbo car. So this car, other than the air to water system, it's pretty much the same setup except... Uh, yeah, so it's, it's um, all the good fueling as far as the high pressure. The only thing that's gonna be holding it back is gonna be stage one injectors. Um, and then trying to get to 700 wheel horsepower does is right at the limit of the AMS 450 low pressure. With the smaller setup with stage ones and stage twos, I have hit over 700 before. Um, so it's definitely possible. It can vary a little car to car. And then as well, it just boosts a little bit lower too. But if you're really wanting to go all the way, make sure the car has substantial fueling. I recommend doing the Z1 525, a low pressure with a relay, and then make sure you do stage two injectors and a stage three high pressure fuel pump. And AMS recently released the stage three injectors. Those will work even better. What's the power goal for this car? Um, still is going to be right around that 700 mark. Uh, we'll see how everything looks when we start actually tuning it and turning it up. Um, but anything above 680 to 720 is, is the target. Nice. So yeah, while that car's getting done in the shop, we're gonna dyno this one first and see what happens. So, I forgot. This car has a two and a half inch cabback exhaust and padded down pipes. So I'm expecting 680, maybe 700 out of this setup. So the, the exhaust is limiting us. It's going to be probably a little under 700 with this with right. these mods. Okay. However, yeah. it's worth it because the arc exhaust with these AMS padded pull down pipes sounds phenomenal.
you find yourself on a road trip or anything where you get stuck with like buckies or not so sure it's great. Yeah. Just stick stick to map one, it's gonna be conservative. Okay. Um, otherwise uh, this blue, so that's map one is this one, this is the 93 times okay. power, so map one's 411, 393, it's going to feel pretty slow. As you see, boost doesn't really come in, um, obviously it's spooling on all these, so 14 PSI by about 4,000. This is on the dyno, so on the road, if you're in fourth gear, you'll get a lot more out of it, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the dyno with lower load, um, 14 PSI doesn't come to about 4,000, um, 20 PSI doesn't come to about 4,500, and okay. then from here, that's then the rest 45, are about the same. Yeah. So, all right, so if you look here, these are the, the essentially three maps, four different power levels. So we have the daily map, that's gonna be the same whether you're on ethanol or 93, because we capped the boost at about 13, 14 PSI. Uh, made 411, 393 torque. Uh, and then from there we go to the 93 high boost, which is gonna be capped at about 20 PSI to 21 PSI. That made 540 wheel horsepower, 506 wheel torque. Um, and you see it's a pretty flat power band. Uh, from there, we get E50 in the tank. We have our mid boost, which is just going to be conservative increase of power with the ethanol. Uh, that made 630 wheel horsepower, 543 wheel torque. Then now we actually push the vehicle to our to the limits as far as um, we're able to do regarding fueling and uh, torque. So we bring torque up to about 574 wheel torque, and then uh, we're limited on the top end with boost uh, because of the fueling limitations with the stage one injectors, the low pressure fuel pump, um, and then just the restrictive exhaust. So we reduced boost a little bit. This car is peaking at about 25 and a half, 26 PSI. Uh, we're still able to get 694 wheel horsepower and 574 wheel torque. And also just to note, it is currently 92, 96, 93 degrees in the dyno room while we're doing these pulls. So uh, that is another thing that does affect power a little bit is that the, the charger temps are, gonna, are over 100 degrees. Nice. Uh, and we're just unable to bring that down. Well, you like this. What is this? My jaws were hurting. Make okay. of that what you will. Okay. Anyway, we finished putting the turbos in this car like around the time that AMS released this pump and the customer was like, yo, let's put the AMS pump in there. So we're like, okay. So we ordered it, got on the schedule uh, and it's ready to go. I mean, at first glance, it's nice, man. This reminds me of, so on the B58s we use Precision Raceworks, right? Mm -hmm. They have the top hats for like the thousand horsepower pumps and all that crap. This is like, dude, feel this. Yeah, it's, it's actually really nice. I drop it, imagine. I mean, it probably wouldn't hurt because it's but billet. Th this but just feels expensive. It does feel expensive, right, Marcus? It looks expensive. It looks don't, expensive. don't mess it up. The most expensive part <laughs> inside a Q50. Ayo. Jeez. Um, but no, I mean, quality wise, it, it's there. This is honestly probably, I know AMS like makes good stuff, but this is my favorite part for them just because of how quality this top hat is. Um, you know, some people, I, I heard a lot of people complaining about the price. Um, I think we made cheap options work for too long on these platforms is really why everyone's so surprised. Like the fact that we have like a $300 low pressure pump drop in kit from AMS and others is great. And it got us this far. The fact that we didn't have an actual low pressure pump system with a top hat and all of that for this long is crazy. Um, B58s had it like probably very quickly after people started modifying them and they've been around the same amount of time as us um so uh, us as the vr30 <laughs> yeah i'm i'm excited to see this work i don't know how I'm difficult the install is going to be we'll a see a lot of wiring yeah. we'll see if marcus yeah. hates it but yeah, it looks like we got two two walbro 450s right the 274 yep. part numbers yeah so these two together is capable of over a thousand horsepower on e so we should be good let's, let's see what it does Make it happen, Marcus. Okay. okay. <laughs> He's all right. nervous. Cut to He's the like, end. <laughs> the little okay. biscuit. Oh, you gotta put this in first. You assemble it inside, right? That's why they have these little screws on it. Uh, to drain the tank. Completely. On both sides. Well, wow. Have fun, I guess. Have fun, I guess. Good thing you have uh, you have an electric siphon. Yeah. That, oh. By the way, electric siphons, if you own a generator and you live in Houston where power sucks and the grid <laughs> fails all the time and you're without power for five days because of a 30 minute thunderstorm, <laughs> you should get an electric okay, siphon. To, to be fair, that was a It made my life way easier filling 16 gallons uh -huh. of gas in my generator every day. To be fair, that was a tornado. It was an EF1, dude. Okay. Yeah, this Bro. little shop almost died. Iowa and Kansas get like EF5s and their grids back up sooner than freaking Houston. Anyway, get electric siphons. They're useful. Bye. Nice. You know, it's just extra mm. uh, filters. What? All the little magnetic. 
think these are magnetic if I remember correctly. Yeah. I don't know anything really about fueling. Uh, but connectors are they include everything in this. Oh, what the Oh, have fun wiring and putting everything together. Yeah, this is, this is a very comprehensive kit. Yeah, I see why this is 1700 bucks. Let's get a closer look at this. B roll of that. Just. I'll just drop it like that, no wiring or anything. Yeah? yeah? Should work. Yeah. It's a key 50. Just, just do it. the one pump, don't do the two. <laughs> Why am I fuel cutting at 700 <laughs> horsepower? I don't know. Uh, I don't know why I'm holding this, but I'm just playing with it. Alright, here you go. Have fun. Uh, 2,000 years later. This, um, is a, this is the AMS dual pump system in the side of the car. I know you guys can't see much and a lot of stuff that goes along with this pump is already installed and in the tank of the car. So the only thing you can see right now is the top hat. Uh, it's all wired up, ready to go. Um, okay, just walk us through the process. All right, uh, so basically, um, you probably saw before, uh, when you get the kit, it only has one pump in it. It's like the, the, on the top hat piece. Uh, so you have to wire in the second pump, wire it to the top hat, and then from there add a bunch uh two different relays which they all provide for you they provide everything like heat shrink butt yeah. connectors oh and ring they have instructions on why right for this yes yeah yes. so it's very detailed yes so there's two different instructions you have uh an option for a single pump and then you have an option for uh the dual pump if you're doing the dual pump option and you're not doing a return style fuel system when you do the actual pump fittings follow the single pump instructions and then add in the second pump. The install is pretty straightforward. You just, it takes, it's a meticulous process. So yeah, it's, it's, it's so much pump. wiring. That I think that's the most intimidating yeah. part. I have a new file from Alex. I'm gonna flash it right now. Cause he want turbos. And then we're gonna start it. Well, who says he's gonna start it so I can take a video of it. Okay, it's done. I just gotta cycle the ignition, clear codes and we should be good to go. We gotta prime it. It's okay, it'll make turbo noises on the on the dyno. Yeah. Back to back Z1 turbo installs. Yes yeah, sir. Marcus loves Z1 turbo. Yeah, hey, you got one more after yeah. this. Oh yeah, we got do. Uh, the blue key system. But he likes turbos on Q50s, he hates turbos on anything else. What? <laughs> he just anyway. hates that car specifically. He hates he hates all my cars. He hates you. Yeah, okay. not the cars. A little bit of smoke coming out right now, but uh, that's uh, because the exhaust has some oil in it from the uh, previous turbos kind of going out. So, good reason to upgrade turbos, I guess. But yeah, that will burn off in the next few pulls that we do on the dyno, probably.
Okay. All right. It's very warm in here. It's 100 and almost 102 degrees. Yep. All right, so this car is a pretty basic Z1 setup. It is, uh, this one is air to air, but it's got all the other supporting mods, injectors, low pressure, high pressure, um, the boost sensors, and pretty much everything else you'd need to make 700 plus. Um, this one does have the AMS, the, the new AMS dual low pressure setup with the basket and everything. Uh, and it has worked phenomenally. The car is down to the last run. We made 740 wheel horsepower. The car is under an eighth of a tank. It's flashing 10 Ooh. miles of range at me. Nice. So, and um, no fuel cuts. <laughs> no fuel cuts. So this low pressure has worked phenomenally. It's definitely providing great pressure to the high pressure because I can also see in the high pressure duty that it is a lot lower than it would be if we just had a single pump. So fantastic pump. It has eradicated all the, the fuel cuts we had. Um, and it, it's gonna be great going forward in the future. Outside of that, at 26 PSI, this car made 740 at the wheels and just under 600 wheel torque. Uh, that's kind of where we cap it out. We wanna keep it under 600 wheel torque. So pretty flat power band from 5,000 and up with less than 600 wheel torque. And then on the low boost map at 21 PSI, it made 631 wheel horsepower and 552 wheel torque. Um, there's one thing I want to note as well on that is that this this mid boost map is relatively conservative. We, we limit boost to about 21 psi, but we also limit timing. That's running the same timing as the 740 horsepower one. So nice. it's conservative on both standpoints. Um, that's why it gives us this nice flat power band. Whereas um, with the higher boost one, whereas torque starts to fall off because we're increasing boost across the way. That's how we keep the torque flat between the two, uh, with running the same timing. And then obviously the other great thing about these turbos is just the, the variability and boost control. Then at a 14 flat PSI, we're able to make a flat 418 wheel horsepower, 415 wheel torque um, as a daily map. So um, that is just Very nice. super conservative. <laughs> you have a nice, still safe, manageable uh, daily map if you wanted to, to really limit the power, if you have anyone else drive the car, stuff like that. Uh, this car came in with ethanol in there, so we don't have any 93 runs. Uh, the daily map's gonna be the same on 93 as it is on ethanol. Uh, we just don't have the high boost 93 that you normally see with the four runs that we typically nice. post. So what do you think about these turbos? So, uh, as I've said a lot, <laughs> I think we've done close to 30 Dude, sets yeah. now, or maybe more than that. I, I love these turbos, they have great boost control, the wastegate um, is, is perfect, it's really smooth, the, the boost control is perfect on these. Um, and you get it all the way from, with a good flowing exhaust, it'll make about 14, 15 PSI with wastegates wide open, and then all the way to 30 plus PSI if you have the built motor. I haven't pushed them, I haven't had a setup that allows me to really push them, the turbos to their max, um, but I know they're good for, for more than 32 PSI as they sit. Mm. Probably, if we were to just close wastegates and go full sin, they'd probably make close to 30, 38 PSI, Jesus. 40 PSI. Uh, I don't think they're ever gonna do that though, <laughs> um, just because of the back pressure on with the BR30 with the head design. Uh, but overall, it's a phenomenal turbo for anyone wanting over 700 wheel horsepower on a stock block. I think it's the perfect setup. Damn, that's that's MP almost. What's the range on it? Wait, where's where's <laughs> 16 miles of range left? Nice, that pump works. I just got in. What time is it, Chidong? Uh, it's like 3 p.m. because you just came in. Uh, per usual, 11:30 a.m. It's pretty early for me, actually. Wow. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. I'm totally here at 9 o'clock every day. <laughs> what are we looking at? Oh, Paul Weiser's car. All right, let's see this. I thought we were looking at the moon landing. Oh, wait. Oh, wow. Weird. Moonshine's a moon landing denier. He also thinks the world is flat. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> he genuinely he argues with... Right, Chidong? He argues with him every day. He says the world is flat, and we have to convince him it's not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I legitimately think I'm stupid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyway. Let's not put that in video. It's okay. Anyways, what are we looking at? I love boost control on Z1. So nice and it's smooth. It's very pretty. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. What I care about is fuel. Show me, show me fuel pressure and high pressure fuel pump. Fuel pressure? What's that? Oh, well, yeah. Are you guys good? <laughs> Here's your favorite. Yeah, I know. That is my favorite. Oil pressure not dropping off is fantastic. Unlike uh, some other turbos right, that we've seen this. where because they're not ball bearing, oil pressure crashes. Now look, it's 52. At 7,300 RPM. Yeah, it's nice. Anyways. Healthy. Okay. Um, That's ugly. Can we not show that? People are like, yeah, what the hell is that, that fuel is pressure? Ugly. Look at high pressure. At, at 260? Boost, Damn. At 260. Damn, that's that AMS dual pump putting in work, that's dude. That's a substantial difference. Wow, what, what E content is this? E58. Dude, that's impressive because E58. on. Okay. Yeah, let me throw a manifold gauge at this bitch. Look at this. 20, 26 at 70. 100 RPM, high pressure is 260, 
flex fuel is 58 percent and manifold gauge is 26. okay so for reference guys i don't know if i've ever talked about this but what people don't really know is you know how we have the the 450 lph is it are they is that the lph rating no is, is 450 yeah, the, it is the lph rating right yeah yeah the walbro 450 is the ones the part number that ends in 274 yeah. that's technically only rated for like I think 800 horsepower on 93. Yeah, it's it like caps out at like 650 technically on on full E85, which is why we've been turning these cars down um, yeah, because we've had fuel pressure issues. The single right? low pressure can't keep up yeah. with this much power. But with the ethanol. new AMS setup, it's a dual low pressure. Yep. With the so cute finishing the shoulders. Well, anyway, I'm gonna shut up now. Now we don't have issues where we got plenty of high pressure pump to go. So this is what an this is what an FX200. FX 180, I think. He's, yeah. It's oh, okay, whatever. Right? It's an FX 180. FX it's, 180 it's with the AMS. So pumps, but FX it, 180, FX 200, same thing. Uh, the AMS RA 405 yeah. or Stage 3, they call it now. What? XDI 60. You get one of those pumps, and, or what we used to call the big bore pumps. You get those. Well, God, we've gone through so many names on all the fuel setups, yeah. bro. It's so confusing but for customers. What this shows is that is that the high, we've been upgrading high pressure more and more, <clears> but that's not really the limitation. We've been upgrading high pressure so it's much been low because pressure. we don't have the low side to go with it. Now that we have proper low side, it shows that, that the, the 180 has, has so much yeah. room to go. You, you wouldn't run out of fuel. So this, this car could easily run E85 if the injectors would allow it. That's what I want to see. Show me fuel injection and to spark, baby. Oh, dude, you could easily run this on E85. Yeah, you could run it quite a bit more. Now you got to revise all those times you said, we can't do it. No, we yeah, can't do it. They just, people, don't, people don't buy the parts. So now when you guys come in and ask us, I want to run full E, we're going to require you to buy a dual pump, at least a big bore. And these are what, 1800cc injectors? Uh, I think there's the spool 2050s. Now. Oh, the spool 2050s? Okay. Really, so yeah, you could, but any, anything, I think even the AMS... Um, AMS stage twos might struggle with it, but the stage threes would definitely run full E. And then you've got the the spool twenty fifties. You got I the XDI twenty one hundreds. These are spool, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, Damn. great success. Great success. Yes. Yes. Anyway, dual pumps. Do it. Any of you guys that want over seven hundred horsepower or. Actually, I'm going to say over 650 horsepower reliably, please do the dual pumps, please. It and makes also, our life easier, fueling's clean, it, everything looks better. It's also a, a safety standpoint if yes. on because fuel cuts plague these cars. Yeah, you can, we ran this car on the dotted line, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, it's 16 miles. It was, it was less than an eighth okay, of whatever. a tank. Whatever. Less than um, an eighth of a tank. It doesn't matter. We did 700 horsepower at less than an eighth of a tank. 740. Okay, sorry, 740. Um, but yeah, as a safety Nerd. standpoint, it's it's worth it in a lot of ways. Even if you're not pushing anywhere near those numbers, it, it, it eliminates fuel cuts. You don't have to worry about having more than half a tank. You don't have to worry about feeling for a fuel cut. It just keeps you it from... It also is a very clean, safety. clean pump. Very nice. Makes you feel like a Q50 is a premium product. Wow. <laughs> Alex is like, Alex is like, bro, please. They tell me I'm not all allowed right. to say things. I'm like the old person that they have to censor out all the time. Yes. At least I'm not ranting what Nissan Z owners want me to start. Oh, please stop. Did you guys know X5? Oh my God. The old, the G05 X5, which was like the 2019 to 2023 model year. You can get those fully loaded with the V8 N63 TU3, which is pretty reliable for like... You asked if they know you mid thirties. You guys care. should get them. Everyone should get them. Well, please, it's a great really idea. Good. I'm gonna buy it for the shop. We're gonna tune it. <laughs> you asked if they know, not if they care. <laughs> I wonder if they'll care about how you spend your money, Moonshine. I don't spend money. Should, should we tell? Should we tell everyone what your latest purchase? No, let's not put this in videos. Yeah, that's what I thought. You.